Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuhu. Welcome to your uh, halaka, weekly halaka on Friday. So now after uh, Ramadan, uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a wonderful month. Uh, we were going to go back to normal, to our regular programs. And we are going to um, resume our Friday halaka. Before Ramadan, uh, a couple of weeks before Ramadan, we were actually covering the stories of the prophets, peace be upon them. And uh, we covered the story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam, and then Prophet Nuh, and then Prophet Hud, and then Prophet Saleh. And now we come to the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Since we're just starting after Ramadan, I'm going to make this halaqa a little bit short, but generally speaking, inshallah, in the following weeks, we'll go back to the normal length, which is about an hour. But today I'll try to keep it short, bi uh, ta'ala. So Prophet Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam grew up in Iraq. And uh, he's, he's actually, he's mentioned in the Quran um, 69 times. And uh, the reference in the Quran is that his father, his father's name is Azar. His father's name is Azar. And uh, he's mentioned a couple of times by name in the Quran, his father. And uh, especially in the context of the conversation uh, he had with his father and the advice that he gave to his father. Uh, so he grew up in Iraq and it was... Um, a society it was an environment of worshipping idols and uh, statues. His father was actually a carpenter and he used to make um, statues for worship. He used to make idols for worship. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided Ibrahim alayhi salam, who's known in the Bible as Abraham. Uh, Allah guided him from an early age to the truth, to Islam. So Allah sent to him. Uh, revelation and the reality of the message of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, is monotheism is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone meaning that Allah is unique in his names and attributes and that he is the creator the originator the sustainer of the of existence and that he's the only one who is worthy of devotion and worship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually refers to this in the Quran Allah says Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifan wa lam yakun min al-mushrikeen that Ibrahim was a nation by himself this was his influence and this was his intensity as a person and he was upon the straight path he was not from those polytheists or the people who associated uh, partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was thankful shakiran li an'umihi ijtabahu wa hadahu ila siratin mustaqim he was a very thankful grateful servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him and guided him to a straight path. And Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَنِ اتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ We have revealed to you, we have inspired you, O Muhammad, to follow the path or the religion of Ibrahim, which is the straight path of monotheism. He was not from among the polytheists. And it shows here that the message of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is the same as the message of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, the same as the message of all prophets and messengers it was the worship of Allah calling humanity to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone actually Allah instructs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say as in Surah Al-An'am قُلْ إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ دِينًا قِيَمًا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Say, O oh Muhammad, that Allah guided me, Allah has guided me to a straight path, a religion that is straightforward and straight, which is the religion of Ibrahim, and that's monotheism. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Ibrahim alayhi salam and he's one of Uli al-Azm, one of the special prophets, the five prophets that Allah called Uli al-Azm, prophets of firm resolution, uh, of uh, the prophets of strong will and great sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from a young age, Allah guided Ibrahim alayhi salam and he turned to his father. Uh, he actually said, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, he said to his father, why do you worship idols that do not hear and do not see? Why do you worship them? You should worship your Lord alone. These things cannot benefit you. So Allah says, 
واذكر في الكتاب إبراهيم إنه كان صديقا نبيا إذ قال لأبيه يا أبتي لما تعبد ما لا يسمع ولا يبصر ولا يغني عنك شيئا يا أبتي إني قد جاءني من العلم ما لم يأتك فاتبعني أهدك صراطا سويا الله سيزا منشن إبراهيم منشن in the book إبراهيم he was a truthful prophet that when he said to his father why do you worship that which, is, which does not hear and does not see and does not benefit you O oh my father, I have received knowledge which you have not. So follow me and I will show you the straight path. Uh, again, but his father rejected that. His father did not accept this invitation and this message. Actually, uh, Ibrahim salam spoke with so much concern, passion and, and, and compassion towards his father. He said, O oh my father, that I'm afraid that punishment would befall you from Allah because you have aligned yourself with shaytan. يا أبتي إني أخاف أن يمسك عذاب من الرحمن فتكون للشيطان وليا. But unfortunately, his father did not accept. His father insisted on his disbelief and on inviting people to the worship of idols. He actually threatened Ibrahim and he said, قال أراغب أنت عن آلهتي يا إبراهيم لإن لم تنتهي لأرجمنك وهجرني مليا. He said, Oh Ibrahim, are you choosing another my, a path other than mine? Are you worshipping other than what I worship? If you do not desist, I will stone you to death. And he basically said, leave me alone, don't live near me. He, he, that's what he said, that's what, that was his response to his son Ibrahim alayhi assalam. Uh, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam many times in the, in the context of, Allah mentions him as an example, as a role model in terms of separating oneself and drawing a line between truth and falsehood between the religion of Islam and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, monotheism, and any other way like polytheism or denial of Allah, etc. So many times in the Quran, Allah mentions him as a role model, how he set himself away from, uh, or he set his path away and clear from other paths. Ibrahim alayhi salam had many debates with his people from a young age, as we said. And there is a mention of Prophet Ibrahim in, in Surah Al-An'am and I noticed that there's a lot of misunderstanding around this. So let me just recite the verses and translate them and then we will clarify the misconception. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَأَى كَوْكَبًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فلما أفل قال لا أحب الآفلين فلما رأى القمر بازغا قال هذا ربي فلما أفل قال لئن لم يهدني ربي لأكونن من القوم الضالين فلما رأى الشمس بازغة قال هذا ربي هذا أكبر فلما أفلت قال يا قوم إني بريء مما تشركون إني وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفا وما أنا من المشركين So Allah says here that we have shown and we have demonstrated and clarified to Ibrahim the dominion of the heavens and the earth, the reality meaning of existence, what's the reality of this world? And so that he becomes one of those who have certain belief and, and, and strong faith. So when the night fell, he saw a planet and he said, this is my Lord. But when the planet disappeared or when, when, the, when the planet was no longer visible, he said, I don't like those that disappear. And then when he saw the moon, he said, oh, that must be my Lord. And uh, when the moon was gone, when the moon was, was no longer visible, he said, if my God, if my true God, my true creator does not guide me to the truth, I shall be from the losers. And then when he saw the sun visible, he said, this is my Lord. This is bigger than the ones before. But then when it set, uh, or when they, or after the sun set, he said, basically, uh, all my people that I am, I, dis, I, I dissociate from everything that you worship other than Allah. Because at this time people were worshipping idols and they were also worshipping some natural phenomena like the moon, the stars, the planets, etc. And there is something we need to clarify about the worship of idols that I'm going to do just one, once I finish with these verses. So then Ibrahim says, إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That I turn my face to the one who created and originated the heavens and the earth. And I'm not from those who associate partners with him. 
Many people think that those people were so stupid that they really worshipped the stones, or they worshipped the wood of which the idols were made, or they just worshipped the sun just like that. Those people had a philosophy around all of this. Those people had a philosophy about the, ori the origin of the universe and the reality of God and uh, how God materializes or manifests in magnificent creation like the sun, like the moon, some celestial bodies, or even the whole of creation, including the idols. So for them, it's not like these idols created them, but they actually... They created a connection, they made up a connection between these idols and these statues and the true creator of the heavens and the earth. Whether it was like the creator manifested or incarnated himself in this creation or he uh, is connected to this creation somehow and so on and so forth. So don't think these people were plain stupid or their argument was very simplistic. No, these, these cultures were very sophisticated, were highly philosophical. And, and the reason I'm saying this is that these days, we have a lot of these philosophies popping up in modern facade, under modern facades. Uh, sometimes you will see them under the guise of uh, some philosophy, or maybe the law of attraction, or maybe the um, uh, energy, universal energy, universal mind, and all, and all of that stuff. You just have to realize, uh, because many Muslims are falling to these, thinking that, yeah, the world is just vibrations and everything is just energy, etc., and so on and so forth, uh, that these are just the same philosophies, the same old philosophies that are just being revived and put under some scientific disguise and some religiously acceptable disguise as well. So those people who worship the idols, including the people of Quraysh, don't think they were just worshipping stones. Now these people had, there's, there was a deeper element to their philosophy that's not so simplistic. Uh, so again, so we need to be on the watch out for, you know, for these philosophies as they emerge in our modern times. Uh, and we understand their connection to those older philosophies. Many people think these verses that I just quoted that Ibrahim was searching for the truth and he mistakenly thought that the planet was Allah or was the true God. And then he thought the moon was the true God, mistakenly. Or that he thought then the sun was the true God. No, no, no. This, this is actually, this is a, a narration or Allah's meant, this is an account of the debate Ibrahim had with his people. He was basically having, he was having a debate with them. Because part of what they worshipped wasn't only the idols, the idols were, were connected to some other phenomenon, just like the sun, the moon, the stars, etc. Uh, he basically, he was debating with them when he saw a planet, and he said, Oh, is this my Lord? Does it really deserve my worship? Is it really the originator of the heavens, of the, of the heavens and the earth? Does it deserve my devotion? Uh, and then when it disappeared, he said, How come it appears and disappears? How could that even be God? Right? So he was arguing with them for the sake of argument. He was bringing these issues. When the, when the moon appeared, he said, well, maybe this is actually, could that possibly be the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who truly deserves my devotion and servitude? And then when it was no longer visible, he said, how come? Now, I'm not going to worship something that sometimes is visible, sometimes is not visible, that it is hidden by other celestial bodies. That couldn't be God. And then when the sun appeared, he said, well, maybe the sun, right? So he was having, that was by way of debate. It's not like, uh, because many people think Ibrahim Al was confused and he was searching for Allah and that at some point he thought the sun was the true God. That's not what the verses are talking about. So this is a misinterpretation of the verses. So anyway, Ibrahim Al salam was advising his people in many ways. He was... Uh, talking to them about Allah, telling them who, who Allah truly is, but they were arrogant and they were very defensive in terms of preserving their own religion, their own way of life. Again, because they built a lifestyle around that. And uh, so Ibrahim decided to approach him, and he was still a young man, by the way. At that time, he was a teenager. He decided to resort to another, maybe it might seem as an extreme approach, but it's a very strong approach nonetheless. Uh, so Ibrahim, alayhi salam, uh, and this was the habit of his people that they would go sometimes out of town, the men, out of the town for, for the hunt. They would go and hunt uh, because they depended partly on, on hunting animals for their, for their survival, for their food. 
and uh, or they would uh, travel for for some other other uh, uh, activities and uh, sometimes all of the men in the city would actually travel outside or would leave the city again for hunt or for some livelihood and um, so one day they were leaving and Ibrahim salam wanted to stay at home wanted to stay there in order to teach them a lesson uh, so he actually pretended to be uh, ill that he wasn't feeling well so he said that I'm gonna stay here because I'm not feeling well I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay here so they left him and they, they went so what he did he brought the axe and he destroyed all of their idols except for the biggest the one that is the biggest in size and then he uh, he hung the axe on the bigger one that he kept intact and this is just to get them thinking he was trying to cut through their their uh, their, their very well uh, indoctrinated ideas and beliefs about these idols being a symbol of God or being connected to God or being God incarnation etc uh, so when they came back later on they came and they were surprised they were shocked to see all of their gods being destroyed and uh, so they thought who did that to our gods one of them said well you remember it was ibrahim who used to speak ill of them he used to say oh these are just mere uh, objects mere stone or mere wood statues and they don't benefit you so he was always against them it must be him so they went and brought him they captured him and they brought him and they said are you the one ibrahim is it you who did this to our idols is it you who destroyed our gods? So uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, well, uh, it seems, look at them. It seems the biggest among them is the one who did that because he's intact. There's, there's no damage to that idol. And this idol has the, the axe hanging on its, uh, on its shoulders. So ask, ask the biggest of them, the biggest of your gods. Maybe he's going to tell you. And that made them think this was a shock to them if we are worshiping these or if these things are symbols of god or connected to god they can cannot defend themselves that's number one number two the biggest among them cannot even tell us what happened so that caused them to think but again here it is their uh, insistence on their false way kicked in and kept them blind so they decided to keep going with their belief and they said they realized what, what, what the point of Ibrahim was. They figured the point, but they decided to reject it and go all the way against him. And the best way to do that and pro to prove their point is actually to execute him. Since he, for them, he gave them an excuse now for a very severe punishment. So they decided to uh, execute Prophet Ibrahim They decided to come. They accused him of, obviously of blasphemy. Uh, uh, of treason uh, so he he deserved capital punishment according to them and they decided to get rid of him and they decided to get rid of him the most one of the most difficult ways and that's by burning him alive so what they did they started gathering a lot of wood and a lot of fuel for the fire to some narrations indicate that they actually uh, they managed to create a huge pile that is as big as a small mountain and then they lit up this huge fire and they couldn't even come close to it. This is how hot it was. They couldn't com come close to it to throw Ibrahim in it. So what they decided to do is to use the catapult to throw Ibrahim right into the fire. And they threw him. And the Quran talks about this. Uh, so Allah says about what they, what they planned. Uh... I'm just going to quote the verses exactly. They said, erect this huge fire, construction of fire for him and throw him in it. Allah says, They plotted against him. They wanted to kill him. But we plotted for him and we made them uh, the losers in, 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 this, in this regards. So I want to mention, I want to quote some of the verses. 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they actually uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about at the end of the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam at the end of his story with his people um, Allah says قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ We said, O oh fire, uh, be cool and peace for Ibrahim. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the fire and he's the one who gave the fire the ability to burn. And Allah could take, take that away from it. So, uh, Ibrahim was thrown. And the only thing is the Prophet sallallahu said in the Quran that when Ibrahim was being thrown in the fire, he said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He said, Allah is sufficient for me and he's the best disposer of my affairs uh, so this is a very beautiful dua that we should say that Allah is enough for us Allah is sufficient uh, for us and then Allah SWT saved Ibrahim السلام, and he decided to leave his people since they got to the point where they wanted to burn him alive he just left them he departed from Iraq and he went to Bilad al-Sham he went to uh, uh, the area around Palestine and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran فَآمَنَ لَهُ لوط. and it seems that Lut was from the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam that Lut is actually so there are some historical narrations that Lut was from the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam and he's the only one who believed in him he's the only one who believed in him and they the narration some of the narrations mentioned that he migrated with Ibrahim alayhi salam to Bilad al-Sham and Ibrahim alayhi salam in Bilad al-Sham he's going to start a, a new life uh, again since as we said it's a fresh start after Ramadan I'm gonna keep today's uh, halaqa short and inshallah we will carry on with the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam next Friday ta'ala you're invited to uh, so invited to join us every Friday and uh, we're gonna start the halaqa around uh, for the time being around 8 o'clock 8 p.m. Uh, Toronto time bi'idhnillahi uh, Ta'ala, and I also want to uh, mention that we have the uh, we used to have the before the lockdown, we used to have the classes class for the youth on Sunday uh, for the younger ones. Um, this was the class with me uh, every Sunday around 2 30 uh, p.m. Uh, every Sunday. We're gonna inshallah start this very soon on Zoom online. So it will be it will be available for the kids. Uh, only the, the group that used to join us, inshallah ta'ala. And also we're gonna start the sisters class, the Sunday uh, sisters class. Uh, we are going to start it again, inshallah, and it's going to, we're going to have it online on Zoom. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. So this is uh, um, I don't think we're gonna start this Sunday. Inshallah, this Sunday after we will announce it and we will inshallah send emails to the sisters who are part of that class inshallah uh, so they can join us online jazakumullah uh, khairan may allah reward you wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in